put my name upon the road. He put my name upon the road. He's my friend. Well, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. He's my friend. Then he told me to run on. Then he told me to run on. Then he told me to run on. He's my friend. Well, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. He's my friend. Will he fill me with that holy ghost? To run on, then he told me to run on. He's my friend. Well, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. He's my friend. Jesus on the Inside, working on the outside oh what a change in my life Jesus on the inside working on the outside oh what a change in my life Jesus on the inside working on the outside oh what a change in my life Jesus on the inside working on the outside Holy Ghost on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. Holy Ghost on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. Holy Ghost on the inside, working on the outside. Oh, what a change in my life. Holy Ghost on the inside. Why don't you let down your net? Down into the water, there's a blessing waiting you cannot contain. If you'll just let down your net and wait out in the water, he's pouring out that ladder of rain. Well, when old Satan comes at you, your weapons are not carnal, but the blessed name of Jesus is your power. And when he tries to bite your children, just remember what old Paul did and shake that old snake off into the fire. Why don't you let down your net? Down into the water, there's a blessing waiting you cannot contain. If you'll just let down your net and wait out in the water, he's pouring out that ladder rain. Well, when old Satan comes at you, your weapons are not carnal, but the blessed name of Jesus is your power. And when he tries to bite your children, just remember what old Paul did and shake that old snake off into the fire. Why don't you let down your net? Down into the water, there's a blessing waiting you cannot contain. If you'll just let down your net, way down in the water, he's pouring out the ladder rain. Well, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Well, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. I tell you, God's not dead. He's still alive. God's not dead. He's still alive. My He's still alive. I can feel him in my hands. I can feel him in my feet. I can feel him all over me. I 
tell you God's not dead. He's still alive. God's not dead. He's still alive. My God's not dead. He's still alive. I can feel him in my hands. I can feel him in my feet. I can feel him all over me.
counts the stars one and all he knows how much sand is on the shore he sees every sparrow that falls he made the mountains and the seas he's in control of everything of all the creatures great and small and he knows my name Every step that I take, every move that I make, every tear that I cry, and He knows my name when I'm overwhelmed by the pain, can't see the light of day, I know I'll be just fine. Don't know what tomorrow will bring. I can't tell you what's in store. I don't know a lot of things. I don't have all the answers to the questions of life. But I know in whom I believe, and He knows my name. Every step that I take, every move that I make, every tear that I cry, and He knows my name. Open the floodgates. 
gates of heaven that is rain that is rain open the floodgates of heaven that is rain open the floodgates of heaven that is rain that is rain open the floodgates of heaven that is rain come on press your way in right now come on
What kind of presence that you could walk into if you would just say, Lord, this night is not about me. This evening is about you. And whatever you want to do tonight, God, whatever you want with me, Let's do it. Whatever you want in this service, God, just do it. Here I am. Here I am. breakthrough could you have tonight if you would just say, Lord, here I am. Here I am. Hallelujah. church. We're going to take up our offering real quick before I forget it. This How many is ready to give? we come to you this evening. We love you. We thank you. We praise you, Father. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity, God, that we can give, that we can sow into the kingdom. And Lord, we just ask you tonight, God, that you would just take this seed that we're, that we're given tonight, God, and that you would just move upon it tonight, Heavenly Father. That you're gonna, Lord, you're going to do so much with it tonight, God. You're going to bless in so many ways. Father, we just thank you tonight, God, because we know tonight, God, without a doubt, you're going to bless the gift and you're going to bless the giver. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, hallelujah. If you got an offering this evening, just go ahead and bring it up. Release 
up one more time and just love on him for just a moment you be good Lord we honor you tonight we honor you tonight Jesus hallelujah I'm just thankful to be in this in this house tonight something when you tap into the well when you drop your bucket in the well and you pull something out you man you say well I ain't, ain't got nothing you ain't put your bucket in the well amen hallelujah I'm just thankful for the presence Glory to God. It's not every day that you get a praise team with this of this magnitude with a drummer of that magnitude. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I was sitting there thinking a while ago when I was playing, I'm glad they put that shield up there because if somebody starts throwing something. Amen. Jackson has went to Oklahoma City. He is he is back at work and uh, in Western Oklahoma, and um, so we're praying on this deal. Hallelujah! And so, um, anyway, I said we're gonna raise this up another one. I got one in my sights right now. I'm gonna start working on them, bringing them up. Cause I know God can do it, Amen. That's how we got. That's how I got my piano player. God raised her up, raised up the drummer. And there are no other two knuckleheads that sits up here. I don't know what God did with them. Amen. He just put them in a place and in a position. No, they all do good. I'm so proud. And I sure, 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 as a pastor, I'm telling you, I sure do dread it when they're not here. Hallelujah. But I'm going to tell you, we can't get so focused on that because I'm going to tell you we can hum and get into the presence. Amen. It's not about that. It's about what a kind of heart and soul that we put into it. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to preach on uh, for just a minute for a little while. I got quickened, quickened on that. 
for I'm going to preach for forever how long it takes me when I'm done, I'll quit. Amen? Sometimes Crystal says, do you realize how long you preach? And I said, five minutes. Amen? Sometimes I just lose track. I got a lot to say. Quit timing me. And just listen. Amen? But anyway, I was sitting the other day, and I began to think about this text, and I preached this text. Everybody knows it. It's not, a, it's not an unusual text. In 1 Kings chapter 18 and verse 46, it's, it's talks, or 41, it talks about, through 46, about the Elijah and the abundance of rain. And I was thinking about that the other day. And I preached on the, I've preached on the altar. I've preached on him putting the barrels of water around it. I preached on all this. But the other day, I got to thinking about the servant. And I got to thinking about what God had spoken to Elijah at the beginning of this when God began to, to when God told Elijah, said, uh, go and tell him that the drought is ending and that there's rain coming. And whenever he did, and he, put, he, he went to the, uh, he, he went up on top of the Mount, uh, uh, Mount Carmel and he did all, everything that he did. And then he come back down and he was waiting. He told the servant, he said, go and look. And I began to think about that the other day. And I thought, what in the world? could this man, could this servant had thought when he was going back and he was looking and, 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 and he was running to the edge of that mountaintop and he would look across and he would look across that valley and he would look to see and there wasn't nothing. And, and, and how many times that we go, and this is what I thought, how many times have we prayed about something or how many times has God spoken something that we know that God has, has, has given us some kind of a hope or a word or something, but how many times that we have went and we have looked for that and there was nothing there? But can you imagine, and I thought about this, and I thought about the man that, that went and looked. He went the four, uh, uh, one time, two time, three time, four time, five time, six time, and on the seventh time he come back and he had a different report. And he said, I see a cloud, and it was just the size of a man's hand. Listen to me. It don't take much hope when you haven't seen anything. Amen? But when you see some little something that gives you more, that, that builds you up and says, I know that that has to be God. I know that what I've been looking for, there is just a, a portion of it. There's a small piece of it and it gives you, can you imagine, Alfred, I really thought about this the other day. Can you imagine how fast on that time, that seven time, how fast that servant ran back to give the news to Elijah there is something there this time. There is something. And that's what I want to preach about tonight because I, I, I want you to understand that no matter what God has spoken to you, no matter what you've been praying about, Sometimes it looks like there's nothing. But in the middle of that nothing, if you keep faith and you keep believing and you keep looking, at one moment there's going to be something. Amen? Hallelujah. Look with me at 1 Kings chapter 18 and verse 41. Everybody got that? Amen. Stand with me, would you? And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up and drink, for there is the sound of an abundance of rain. And Ahab went up to eat and Elijah and to drink. And Elijah went up to the top of Carmel. He cast himself down upon the earth, put his face between his knees, and, he, and said to the servant, Go up now and look toward the sea. And he went up and he looked and he said, There is nothing. I want you to, to remember that. And, and he said, Go again seven times. And it came to pass that at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there arises a little cloud of the sea like a man's hand. And he said, Go up and say to Ahab, Prepare thy chariot, get thee down, that thy rain stop thee not. And it came to pass in the meanwhile, that the heaven was black with clouds and the wind and there was a great rain and Ahab rode and went to Jezreel and the hand of the Lord was on Elijah and girded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. Let's pray. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus and ask you, Lord, to bless, to minister, Father God, to open up our hearts, open up our minds, We'll be careful to give you the praise and give you all the glory and help us, Lord, 
In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. You may be seated. You know the story, and, and, and I'll, I, I recapped a whole lot of it, but you know the story, and Israel is being, at, at this moment, was being ruled by the wicked king named Ahab. And he was not only, he, he, he had not only led Israel away from God, but in, 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 into idolatry, but he was also married to a lady, a witch named Jezebel. And together, the Bible talks about it, and they, they had led their children, uh, uh, they led the children of Israel into deep rebellion and false worship. But God had raised up a prophet that would not be shaken and that would not compromise. And God sent him to confront this spirit of wickedness and this false religion. And Elijah confronted Ahab and, <clears throat> and the false prophets of Baal and called fire down from heaven. Now the people had repent, have repented. The false prophets have all been destroyed. And now in the text, the prophet, the man of God, has prophesied already that the rain is coming and that the drought, the three and a half year drought was over with. He tells Ahab, he said, don't worry uh, uh, about this, but be happy because the rain is on its way. So Ahab goes up to eat and drink, but Elijah goes away by himself and he, and, and with his servant, and the Bible says that he began to throw himself down to the earth and he began to pray. And now I want you to understand this because he sends his servant, he calls for his servant, and he sends him to go out to look toward the sea and see if there's any evidence or change of anything coming. Now to see this, to, to, to see that if there's any sign of rain whatsoever and, and if there's anything coming. Now I want you to understand because the other day when God began to deal with me about this and I was, I, I, I was looking out across the sky and and I've seen all sorts of clouds, different clouds, different sizes, shapes, and, and, and everything. And you can imagine on a, on a clear day, there's no clouds, there's nothing and, and, except for blue skies. And, he, and, and, and his servant comes back with a bad report, not only a bad report, but he comes back with an empty report, a negative report, and he comes back with nothing. I mean, he would understand right there that would, if I was Elijah, I would probably be devastated. Because I had I, I, I've spoke this everything that has happened now and 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 God said that it was going to rain and 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 and, and I'm going to tell you something with me and I don't know about everybody else but with me when God tells me something I have a a a, a bad habit of, of wanting to see it now. I don't want to wait on it. When God, when I feel like God is leading us to something or speaking something, I, I, it can't get here quick enough. And I feel that he, he, he had sent him to look immediately. And, 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 and he asked him, he, he came back and he said, what did you see? He said, I didn't see nothing. He reports to the man of God, there's nothing. When, when you pray and, and not seeing anything, my, 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 my. Woo. It's a faith builder, ain't it? When you're praying and you're not seeing anything happening. But think about it. Six times the servant, the servant leaves the man of God to wrestle with God while he scans the heaven for a sign, for any evidence that God has even heard his prayer. Six times the report comes back the same. And the answer was, there is nothing. There was no mistake in his words. They were clear, they were very sharp, and they were to the point. There's nothing. I read it to you in the scripture what he said. There's nothing. No doubt. You've, you've got to understand that no doubt that words, these words had an effect on Elijah, but a true man of faith is not ever shaken by what they see or what they don't see. A true man of faith, instead of being discouraged and given up, Elijah turns, he turns the heat up and he presses his request and he intensifies his prayer and he takes the negative report as a change challenge to the word of God. Nothing like a challenge to the challenge of the point to challenge it against the word. Amen. 
Because there's no doubt when you take a report and you challenge it and you align it up and you put it against the word of God, there's no doubt, church, what is going to trump that? Because they can't nothing compare to the word of God. And what God's word says, it makes no difference what anybody else says. Because I want you to understand, God had told him to appear before Ahab and he would send the rain. In 1 Kings 18.1, you can see it. And it came to pass after many days that the word of the Lord came to Elijah in the third year saying, go present yourself to Ahab and I will send rain on earth. Is that not good? He stands on the word of God. The Bible says he prayed fervently. Fervently. Has anybody ever prayed fervently? You understand what the word fervently means? The word uh, 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 zero, uh, uh, it, 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 it means a burning prayer, a hot prayer. A white hot prayer. How many knows that when something gets white hot, honey, it's hot. And this was the kind of prayer that Elijah was praying. He was praying fervently. Oh, let me tell you something, church. If we would get to praying fervent prayers for those lost loved ones, if we would get to praying fervent prayers for God to move upon this community, if we would get to praying fervently upon the things in which we stand in need of, I just believe that if we would pray that hot prayer, that God would ask answer there's no doubt that if you pray fervently that God will hear you and God will answer you oh there's something about a fervent prayer the Bible says in James that a fervent prayer availeth much Oh, there's something about that. Oh, my God. There's something about it whenever you begin to put your face down between your legs and you begin to pray and you begin to call out to God. But he finally, on the seventh time, his servant servant returns with a side note. There is still nothing but. Something looked unusual this time. There was something that looked a little different this time. He said, what would you see? He said, I saw a little cloud the size of a man's hand. Woo! Raising up out of the sea. The poor servant, don't you know that he was ready to hear those words from, uh, to go back and to look again. But instead at that moment, Elijah jumps up from his position of where he'd been praying. Why? Because that's all that Elijah needed. Oh my God, it's all that he needed. There's nothing but I did see. Oh my God, the tide was changing. The things was turning around. I seen something that time it was unusual. It wasn't very big. He said it was just the size. Oh my God, who needs to see this evening? It's just something. And maybe even this the size of a man's hand. It don't have to be very big. It don't have to be real miraculous. But God just show me something. Just let me see something. Instead, Elijah jumps up. But this time he gives his servant a different direction with a new order and a new instruction. And he says to go tell Ahab, hitch up your chariot, buddy. Woo! Get down off the mountain for there's a sound of an abundance of rain. Whew. It was that ray of hope that he was looking for. Three and a half years, my, 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 my. Three and a half years. There's some of you that has been in a drought longer than that. There's some of you that's been praying for things longer than that. 
Oh, but let me ask you this. Have you been praying the fervent prayer? Have you been praying a hot prayer? Have you been, what have you been praying? What have you been believing? Because let me tell you something. He said there's a sound of a downpour, a deluge, an extremely heavy, hard rain. Oh, can I tell you this tonight? And this is the word that God put in my spirit that I wanted to tell you. And he said to tell you that in the place of where they said there was nothing shall come forth in abundance. I come to tell somebody this evening, I don't know who I'm talking to. I don't know who needs that word, but I come to tell you that there is something that is changing. Somebody, listen to me. Somebody has heard those words. There's nothing. Maybe you've not just heard it once. Maybe you've not just heard it twice. Or maybe not just three times. But it's been over. And it's been over. There's nothing. There's no hope. There's no way. There's no chance. There's no change. There's nothing left. Or there's nothing that we can do. The words that are, are, are meant, listen to me, all those things that are meant to signify an end to something, something that you've been praying, something that you've been believing, the words to, simply, to signify the end. In other words, you can quit praying now. You can quit confessing. You can quit believing. You, can, you, you can't quit confessing. You can't quit believing. You can't quit hoping. Let me say it like this. Your abundance is just beyond that nothing that they said was not, that there was nothing. You can, listen, you can say, I can't say, see it and I don't see anything I don't feel anything I don't see any evidence I may not have any evidence from a natural perspective but I come to tell you I've got confidence in the word of God and if God said it honey my God will do it may not have a natural perspective of it When you don't, but I have a confidence of it, you're in the perfect position for a miracle. Woo. My, 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 my. My God. I was think, thinking Peter fished all night long and he caught nothing. But with one word, he went from nothing to an abundance. One word, Jesus said, uh, Jesus said, go cast that thing out one more time. Oh my God. Can I tell you, I've heard those words. I've heard those words. I said, I, there's nothing that I can do. There's no plate, no reason for me to go to Kyoto and preach. Oh my God. But that's exactly what God spoke. He said, go cast that net out. Uh, uh, do it again. Oh, can I tell you, church, And uh, when God speaks, uh, Peter fished all night. Uh, but with one word from God, uh, when he cast that net, uh, he went from nothing to overflow, uh, from nothing to too much. Uh, he had to call his friends and his partners to bring another boat because they were overloaded because let me tell you something someone needs to know this and you need to understand that it's closer than what you think it's closer than what you think your miracle your healing your breakthrough it's closer than what you think mm, my God have you can, can you can you can you can you understand with me? You're on the brink of breakthrough. Why do you think that hell has been fighting you so hard? Oh, church, if you would understand why hell fights you so hard, listen to me. It don't worry me when hell's fighting me. It don't worry me when hell's coming against me. What worries me is when hell ain't fighting me. When everything's good and there ain't no battles, there ain't nothing coming up against me. Oh, but can I tell you that whenever all hell 
uh, begins to break loose uh, and everything begins to fall apart, uh, my God, uh, I just begin to lift my hands uh, because I know uh, that breakthrough is on its way. Uh, Surely, God, something uh, good is about to happen. You know you're doing something right. When you score, listen to me, when you score uh, the devil's attention, whew, some people say, I don't ever have no battles with the devil. I wouldn't be bragging about it. Oh, my, my, let's brag about the devil coming against us. Let's say, boy, he's fighting me every day. Woo! That's something to shout about. Why is it that we got it so backwards that when the devil's coming against us, we don't have a shout? But we want to shout when everything's going good, when we should be worried about everything. See, because let me tell you, we've got this thing backwards. We've got to turn that thing around because I want you to understand. I know you can't see it, but God has been working in the dark. God is working when you can't see him. God is working right now, even though you may not see him. When he does his best work, when we can't even see what he's doing, he, in, the, in the seasons of your life, that you don't think that he's doing anything. Honey, that's whenever he's working and he's doing everything that he knows to do is the moment the enemy tries to tell you uh, it ain't happening it ain't working uh, he ain't doing anything uh, you know that at that moment uh, that God is working on this uh, on your side uh, whenever there, everything looks uh, see I want to tell you something uh, even when you can't trace his hands uh, or you can't see whatever just trust uh, trust his heart uh, and he's working on your behalf uh, and whether we can see it or not uh, and all things work together for good to them uh, that are love God uh, and that are are the called according to his purpose. Woo. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Mm -mm -mm. Isaac was dwelling in a land stricken with famine. In Genesis chapter 26. You think about it. means no rain. It was severe drought. No crops. It was desolate. The conditions were not, was no good. They were, had to, the livestock was dying. Things was happening. Now I want you to understand this. I want you to think about this for a minute because Isaac thought to go to another place. He was going to go back to Egypt. Woo. Sound familiar? Oh, it just ain't happening here. But I'll go back to Egypt. I'll go back. Looking for better conditions. Listen to me. Better environment. Better weather. Better ground. But God said, no, you ain't going back. You got to stay right here. And you got to sow your seed here where there is nothing. Listen to me. There's no doubt that Isaac was criticized and ridiculed and no doubt that they called him a fool for wasting his seed and sowing in a drought stricken land. Are you with me? But Isaac obeyed the Lord and he sowed his seed in the land where there was nothing and there came forth abundance. Listen to me. And he reaped in the same year a hundredfold. Oh my God. In the very same place that he was trying to leave. In the very same place that it looked like there was no hope. In the very same place. I want to tell you something church. It, don't, it may look like it's empty. It may look like it ain't working. There's people tonight that you've been sowing into. There's people tonight that you've been pouring into. There's 
those things that you've been pouring into. And I'm going to tell you, if God led you to that, you need to stay put and keep pouring it in and keep doing what you're doing because the devil will tell you it ain't going to work. The devil will tell you it ain't worth it. Pack up and move. Oh, let me tell you something. you got to understand on what's one to listen to because if God told Isaac, he said, honey, don't you go nowhere. You stay put and show where I put you. Church, I'm going to tell you what's wrong today. It's too many people when it gets dry and it gets rough, they want to jet. They want to get up and they want to pack up and they want to move. But oh, when God tells you, how do you stay put? Don't you move. Plant your feet. Hold on because there's an abundance coming. There's an abundance coming. Listen to me. I want to tell somebody right now who is looking for a better place, a better environment, more favorable conditions. I want to tell you, hold on. God is about to bless you. God is about to move on your behalf right where you are. My, 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 my. See, we get too we 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 get too antsy sometimes, and we want to move when God's trying to tell us to stay put. We want to move. We want to do things. Oh my God, can you hear what I'm saying? See, it's almost that you can have that Ishmael if you want that. But if God said, "I got an Isaac for you," don't you move quick? Don't you do anything hasty? I'll fix it. I'll do it. Isaac, stay where you are and plant your seed. But God, it's try plant your seed. God, there's no rain. Plant your seed. God, it looks hopeless. Plant your seed. And Isaac did. Oh, can you understand? And he obeyed. And obedience is better than a sacrifice. He obeyed. And the Bible says he reaped a hundred He reaped a hundredfold. My, my, when God, when they say there's nothing, whew, whoo. I know it's hard to believe for rain when you've been in a long drought. Mm-hmm. I know by the Spirit, listen to me, and I know what, by, 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 by Him giving me this word and by Him leading me to this, uh, that I'm talking to some people in this room right now. You feel inside yourself uh, that you've been in a long drought. You've been in a long season of where you feel like you've been doing, you've been doing, oh my God, I'm getting somewhere now. Uh, you, you've been in a place of where you've been planting. You've been in a place of where you've been giving. You've been in a place of where you've been praying. You've been in a place of where you feel like that you're doing everything you know to do. You're giving everything you can. God, I'm giving you everything I know to do. I'm giving you everything. But oh, there's nothing happening. Can I tell you, keep giving, keep believing keep holding on cause you can't beat God I come to tell you the devil can't rob you when God said I'm gonna bless you where you are if you've been doing it because let me tell you drought means scarcity it means lack, deficiency, emptiness, dryness waters, water shortage, want or need listen it may be a spiritual drought Anybody ever been in one of them? You haven't felt God in a long time? Anybody ever been in that place? Where you feel your spirit is dry and empty? Church, I'm going to tell you something. I'm giving you everything I got right now because I want you to hear what I'm saying. You've been in a long, hard battle. And I know sometimes 
And I'm talking from a pastor's heart right now. I'm telling you, I know sometimes that you're, you get exhausted. I know sometimes you get spent. You get worn out. And I know sometimes that things get tough. Oh, it gets hard to even get up and just to get ready for church. And, 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 and sometimes you don't feel like that you can fight one more fight or that you can do it just one more day because I'm empty. Has anybody ever felt like that? You say, I'm just feeling empty. I feel like I ain't got nothing. I ain't got nothing left. But I come to declare to you as your pastor that today the word of the Lord, the drought is breaking and that God is about to do something in your life. There's a drought busting anointing. It's about to break up that dry ground. It's about to break it up because let me tell you something. There's about to be a rain. It's going to moisturize all that dry place of where you've been. Elijah knew what was, what, what he, what we must know and that is the drought has a beginning and that drought has an ending can I tell you something tonight it ain't always going to be dry it ain't always going to be dusty it ain't always going to be barren it ain't always going to be dead listen to me your situation tonight, and I'm, I, 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 I'm speaking to you directly right now, your situation is not always going to be like this. You need to understand that. You know why? Because I believe that God has a front. It's about to move into this house. It's about to move into your life. God has, a mo has moisture coming. I'm going to tell you something. There is a there is a low pressure system that's about to move across your area and I'm going to tell you what it's about to do. There's about to be moisture. I'm telling you that God is about to move in this building. He's going to move in the, and he's going to permeate everything that has been dusty, everything that has been dry, that is which that has been barren, that is which has been desolate and I come to tell you that things is about to bloom and about to blossom again. I come to tell tell you that God is about to move a front across your place. God is about to move it. God is about to moisturize those dry, barren areas that has been in your life. The river is about to flow again. wind is about to blow again. Listen to me. The presence of God is going to move in your drought place. I believe that somebody just right now you just need to lift up your hands right now. Right now and thank God that the drought is breaking in your life. I may not be talking to everybody but I'm talking to somebody because he said when he came back he said I, 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 I didn't see anything but a little cloud the size of a man's hand coming up out of the water. He jumped up and he said but I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. Oh let me tell you something. The Bible does not say anything that there was a sound, a noise or anything to the physical but I believe that to the spiritual I believe that when you're tuned in to the spirit of God that you're going to hear what other people can't hear people are going to look at you like you're crazy when you say but I hear something I hear something moving I hear something blowing I hear something shifting I hear something oh people are going to think you're nuts oh and that you're hearing things and that you need to go to the crazy ward. That's okay. That's okay. Because I ain't hearing it with these ears. You got to be where I'm at to hear what I'm hearing. You got to be where I'm at. You got to be going through what I'm going through if you're going to hear what I've been hearing. Because let me tell you something. He said, I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. All I've heard is negative reports. All I've heard is discouraging words. All I've heard was dry bones talking about how dry they are, how hopeless that it is. I've heard, listen to me, I've heard the weather report and they say there's no end in sight, but there's no rain in the forecast, Elijah. It's 
clear. Uh, they said the drought's going to continue, Elijah. But I'm like Elijah. I'm tuned into a different frequency. Uh, I'm not wired to uh, the same frequency. Uh, and a lot of people are. Uh, I'm hearing the heavens uh, talk uh, about the forecast. Uh, listen to me. Uh, and predicting the rain. Uh, I come to tell you tonight, church, uh, that heaven's forecast uh, is talking about a flood uh, that's about to move in uh, on your area. Listen, it ain't always going to be like this. Where he said there was nothing. And I just tell you, if you're in this room today, you're in a warning area. You're in a warning area that something's about to move across you. Whew. My my my! Don't look for a don't look for a storm shelter on this one. Just stay put. Stay put. Elijah standing in the place where he heard the words. Listen, there was nothing. Listen to me. Watch this. This is what, what I begin to think about. Elijah was in that in, in that position praying. Every time he heard the word, there was nothing. And in the same place where it got, where the man said there was nothing, God turned it around and now says there's something. Oh, my, my, my God. He didn't change positions. He didn't move to a different place. He didn't tell him to go to a different point of looking. He said, but I'm going to stay put. I'm going to pray. Go back and look again. Go back and look again. Go back and look again. I'm praying. I'm believing. And all at once, Something changed. In other words, what Elijah was saying is it's already been released in heaven and it's on its way. Woo, makes me think. Daniel prayed for 21 days. My, my, my. And nothing happened. 21 days that he prayed, nothing happened. And he kept praying, and he kept praying. And on the 21st day, something began to shift. Oh, but can I tell you, when it shifted, he said, I heard you on the first day. I just had to get it here to you. Oh, can I tell you, church, that's why that there's a first heaven, there's a second realm, and then there's a third realm. Can I tell you, this first realm starts about six feet above your head, and then you go into the atmosphere of where there's principalities, and powers and rulers of darkness in high places but then you get to the third dimension and the third dimension is the heavens where God said that's the throne of God listen to me he said but I sent it there and in between me and you in that second realm there was opposition but he said it took me but it took me a moment but he said the angels were warring on your behalf and he said it may have took 21 days but it's here now. Can I tell somebody? Oh, don't give up in well doing for a due season. For a due season. Due season. Due season. Due season. Whew. Every woman in this room knows about a due season. A due season. Oh my God, let me tell you this. Somebody, it's on its way and it's closer than what we even think. I don't know what you've been praying, but listen, it's on heaven's radar right now. It's on heaven's radar. Heaven's Doppler system has done picked it up and it's already been, it's already coming. It's coming down your road. It's driving down your neighborhood right now. Oh, come to tell somebody, open the door and look out. They're coming. I tell you, your prodigals are on the way. Your healing is on the way. My God. Woo. The anointing is changing your season right now. My, my, my. Woo. 
That yoke destroying burden, listen to me, removing anointing is in this room right now. Do you feel it? You feel it? Whew, glory God. But the servant come back the seventh time and he says, I don't know what this means. I don't know what this means. The servant said, oh, I don't know what it means. But I see a little cloud. You know, I sat the other day and I went through everything I could go through to try to figure out. I just wanted a Pictionary. I wanted to look at something. It even re remotely showed me what it looked like with him standing on that ledge looking out across that sea. And that cloud that looked like a man's hand coming up. You know what? A lot of people might have would have confused that. And would have said that ain't that's not what I've been looking for. A lot of people would have mistaken that. Aren't you thankful that sometimes God don't do it the way you think that He ought to do it? That's why you always got to understand and you got to be in tune with what God is doing. Because listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. Because you got to understand, here's two men right now. The, the servant, here's what I want you to understand. The servant went and looked and he didn't really understand what he seen. But Elijah knew. He didn't see it. He just was given the description of what, it, what he thought he saw. And when he was given the description of it, Elijah knew immediately. See, what I'm trying to tell you is not everybody will understand when you get your answer. Not everybody will recognize what God does for you when he does it. Some people may be confused, but you're going to know, oh, my God, that's what I've been looking for. Oh, can I tell you, at that moment, Elijah got up he dusted himself off and he said now I hear a sound go tell Ahab get his chariot ready he said all that with just the word of a cloud the size of a man's hand Ooh. you may understand what I'm saying servant said listen to me the servant said let me find it he said go up go up go say to Ahab back up And Elijah said unto, nope. I'm going to find in a minute what I'm looking for. There's nothing. He said, go seven times. And it came to pass on the seventh time right there. Woo. Bingo. B-I-N-G-O. I found it. That he said, behold, there arises a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. Elijah. There's a cloud coming up. All I see, he said, I don't see anything, but I did see a cloud the size of a man's hand. Elijah said, go tell Ahab. Go tell Ahab. Listen to me. Elijah knew what it meant. You know what he said? Whew, my prayer's been heard. That's my answer. <laughs> That's my answer. Can I tell you? Uh, and when you see that cloud, uh, you can go ahead and praise God for it. Uh, you can go ahead and believe. Uh, it may not look like much, uh, but it's enough. Uh, it's enough, honey. Uh, it's enough. Uh, the answer is on its way. I came to tell somebody in this room today, your prayer has been heard, and your answer is on the way. Listen, your prayers have not been in vain. Your praise has not been in vain. Your sowing has not been in vain. Listen to me. 
you got to understand this. Your faithfulness has not been in vain. Your obedience has not been in vain. God is getting ready to openly reward you because you've been faithful. Oh, God, because you've been doing everything. Blessings are coming your way. Abundance is coming your way. Joy unspeakable and full of glory is coming your way. Your tears of sorrow are getting ready to turn into tears of joy. You may be standing, listen to me, in the middle of a desert right now, staring at nothing but dryness. You may be standing in the middle of a valley of dry bones, listen, and desolation and emptiness with confusion that may be all the way around you. But here's what you've got to understand. Here's what you've got to know is this, let me remind you tonight, in Ezekiel, in the bones, the valley of dry bones, the wind of God began to blow and put back everything back together, everything that had been taken, everything that had been broken, everything, and God raised it back up. Listen, greater than what it was when it went down. Let me say it one more time. In the place where they said there was nothing is going to come forth abundance in your life. I don't know. Listen to me. I'm not I'm not sending up here telling you you're going to flow, you're going to walk, you're you're going to uh, 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 sink in money. I'm not preaching that. Uh, listen, if God blesses you with a dollar, that's good. But what I'm telling you uh, is there's things that's about to break. Things is about to shift. Somebody in this house, you've been in a drought, but your drought is breaking. I want you to shake somebody, elbow somebody next to you, and just shout to them, it's breaking right now. It's shifting right now. The rain is falling right now. Glory. Listen, the wind is blowing. Stand with me all over this room. And when anybody move, I want you to just stick your, stick your hands up right now. Just raise them. The anointing is flowing in this place. I just want to ask you right now, how many right now would release some crazy faith in this place and do just like Elijah and act like it's already done? Start praising him like you believe it. Come on, somebody. Start praising him like you believe it. Come on. Come on, all Elijah. All Elijah done was heard the, high, the cloud the size of a man's hand. Elijah didn't see anything. Elijah didn't know anything. He didn't see it. He didn't know what it looked like. All the only thing the servant did was describe it to him, but it was enough to get him up and get him moving. I want you to do that right now. I want you just to begin to get crazy faith right now and begin to thank God right now like it's already happening in your house. Come on. Come on. What have you been praying? What have you been believing? What are you fervently? I wish somebody would step out right now that you've been believing. Step out, walk up, walk up to this front right now and just declare right where I'm at, right where I stand right now. Right where I stand. God is about to turn this thing around. God is about to move. My kids may be strung out, but God is about to move. I see a cloud. I see a cloud. Woo, come on. Come on, praise him, don't quit. Come on, lift your hands and praise him like it's already done. My, my God, my God, is there anybody in this place right now that you've got doubt in your heart right now? That you got doubt in your heart right now? If you got doubt in your heart, 
there's something you've been praying about and you're thinking it's hopeless, I want you to get up out of your seat and I want you to run to this altar as fast as you can. I want to pray for you. I want to pray, lay hands on you. Because let me tell you something. There's something happening in this room right now. I just released a word from God upon you right now. What are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with that word you just got? What are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with it? You going to go back home and talk about how bad it is? You going to go home and talk about how bad it is? Or are you going to walk up out of here tonight saying, I see a cloud. I see a cloud. I see a cloud. Woo, come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. I want everybody that will just to begin to make your way up here. Come on. We're going to take this a little notch higher. Come on, everybody. Come on. We're going to take this a step higher. We're going to take this as a church, as a body of believers right now. where they said was nothing. Woo. Come on and open up your mouth and give God praise. Crazy praise. service right here that testimonies is about to stop. You're going to come back and you're going to say it looked like nothing but God changed this thing. Come on, lift your hands. Come on, lift your hands and begin to pray. Open up your mouth and begin to pray. Hallelujah, family members, it's about to... They got to come. They got to come. Husbands has got to come. Wives has got to come. Sons and daughters has got to come. Nieces and nephews and grandchildren. now believe what I, what we preached some of you right now here's what I want to say here's what I feel right now some of you been in a drought spiritually you've been in a spiritual drought
and you need it to rain in your life right now. You need it to moisturize. I want you to step up right now. I want you to come to this center of this, this platform right now, and I want you to stick both hands up right now. You've been in a drought spiritually. I know there's somebody in this place right now. I feel it. I feel it. You've been in a spiritual trap. If that's you, I want the ones that's that's that, that 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 is not up here for that. I want you to back up and let the ones come up front. I want a single line of them. Come on. Come on. If that's you, I want you on the front lines. You've been in a spiritual drought. And you feel the effects of it right now. You've not been praying like you should. You've been preoccupied by things. pray that fresh oil falls upon you right now. That the rain of the Holy Ghost begins to fall on you and goes right down to the driest places in your life. Come on, open up your mouth. Come on and open up your mouth. For the dry season is over There is a cloud beginning to swell To the skies heavy with blessing Lift your eyes and offer your heart Jesus Christ open the heavens now we receive the Spirit of God. We receive your rain. We receive your rain. We
like a flood, like a flood, we receive your love, like a flood, like a flood, we receive your love, like a flood. We await the promise to come Everything that you have spoken Will come to pass So let it be done We receive your rain We
worship you. We lift our hands, Lord, hearing your presence. We worship you. We worship you. Forever my Savior, I live to praise you, we worship you, we worship you, heaven come, won't you make Forever my Savior, I live to praise you, we worship you,
Hallelujah. share something with you. I feel the Lord is leading me to, you know, really didn't plan on saying this. I've been working on this for a message for another time. But let me just share you a little something that's on my heart. The Bible says in Galatians that we reap what we sow. Many times people look at that in a negative way. Well, they're going to reap what they sow. Listen to me. Pull this into the in, 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 into a, a a way of what you've been reap, what you've been sowing. You're going to reap. I'm going to tell you, you're going to get a harvest. See, here's what I want you to understand. Sometimes we sow. Isaac, I preached and I, I said in that message that Isaac sowed in a place that he didn't want to sow. Let me tell you something. Sometimes we sow in places and we, we reap that harvest, but there's times that we think we're sowing over here, but in reality, your harvest you reap is over here. Are you with me? Because the Bible says you reap what you sow, but then also the Bible says that you reap in places that you didn't even sow because the wind has carried that seed. See, because what, I want to tell, what, I, what I'm trying to tell you is you're going to be thinking you're sowing here, but God, the wind of the Holy Ghost is going to get that seed and it's going to blow it over there and you're going to reap something over there that you didn't even know you were sowing because I was sowing it right there, but it hit over there. And see, here's what I want you to understand. Organic. Anybody understand organic? You ever looked out in your yard and, 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 and seen something just pop up and you wonder how that got there? You can't explain it. All you can say is maybe the wind blew it over there, blew that seed and it began to come up. See, here's what I want you to understand is no matter what you sow, keep sowing, keep planting, keep believing because even when you don't think it, it's working here, God is going to take that harvest. He's going to take that seed and he's going to blow it by the Holy Ghost and you, you're going to reap in places that you didn't even know you were sowing. You got to understand that. Somebody needs to hear that. Somebody, you've been sowing into, listen to me. And I'm going to tell you, as a pastor, the hardest thing that I've had to learn is sometimes you sow into people and you don't get what you think you need to get. You're sowing everything into somebody. You're sowing it. You're sowing it. You're sowing it. And you're expecting this big harvest of uh, 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 something to come up, and it don't happen. But what you realize is the one that was behind that person, they, they begin to come up, and you say, well, look over here. I wasn't even sowing into that person. I was sowing into that one, and I got this one. See, you got to realize that what God does, God does it right. Listen, don't worry about what's happening. God is going to take you because let me tell you something. You keep praying and you keep believing because God is going to show you there's a cloud. There's a cloud. Keep looking. Listen, I think that Elijah knew enough that if it would have took 30 times, he would have kept sending him back. You know why? Because he was expecting something. See, when you're not expecting something, you don't go look for it. But when you look for it every day, when you expect it every moment, when you expect it every moment, Listen, there's some of you in here right now, and, 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 and I, 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 I just want to tell you, and I keep looking at you behind Deborah. I don't know anything about you. 
but I want to tell you something. God is about to move on your life and in your family. Because you're sowing. You're coming. God is going to reward your faithfulness. He just wants you to know that. Because you may think that you're looking over here and God said, while you're looking over here, I've took the wind and I blew it over here and what you've been looking at over here, it's going to be hard. It's going to pop up over here. See, you got to realize that, church, and you got to understand that. The same goes in youth. Michael, Sally, you may be looking in one direction, but God said because of your faithfulness and because you're sowing and because of what you're doing, God said you're going to get something that's going to come up that you didn't even realize it was you. You didn't. You wasn't even sowing in that direction. You were just sowing, and God said, I'm going to show you there's some organic things that's about to come up that you didn't even plant. My God, I'm going to preach the whole message. Realize that. The Bible says the wind blows where it wants to. You just throw that seed out. You keep putting it out there and God will keep put blessing. I see a cloud. I see a cloud. Hallelujah. 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 For this church, I see a cloud. I see a cloud. You know how hard it is? Y'all know how hard it is to pastor a church? Take it from experience. It's hard. It's tough. You know how many times a week I quit? More than you know. God says just keep throwing it. Keep throwing it. Listen to me. Keep throwing it. Keep throwing it. Keep throwing it. Keep throwing it. I'm going to tell you something. I didn't have any idea this morning when I was talking about the branches breaking off. And sister down here shared something with Crystal the other day and then turned around and shared it with me this morning after the message that, 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 that there were sprouts, things that was coming up. There was things being broke off. But every time that something broke off, that there was a new sprout coming up. Listen to me. Keep sowing. Keep praying. Fervently. Fervently. Keep praying. There's going to be that cloud. There's going to be that. It's going to pop up. Hallelujah. Aren't you thankful for the faithfulness of God? Y'all, God is so faithful. Don't ever doubt Him. Don't ever doubt Him. He's not to be doubted. When He speaks it, get ready. It's going to happen. Whew. Isn't He faithful? Would you stand with me, would you? Would you just lift your hands one more time? All over this building, just lift your hands. And I want you to begin to thank him right now for his faithfulness in your life. Come on. Come on, you're gonna show you're gonna sow some seed right here. You're gonna sow some seed right here to God right now. Lord, I'm thanking you. I'm thanking you. For what we're going to see, what we're going to have, what we're going to harvest. Because you're faithful, Jesus.
Now come on and give him a hand clap of praise. Come back Wednesday night, 7 o'clock. I got something good for you. Amen. 7 o'clock, uh, Wednesday night recovery tomorrow night for anybody that wants to come. I might, I might preach. I don't know yet. Depends. We'll see what happens. Somebody will just come. Amen. Uh, next next Sunday night for anybody that wants to, uh, not Sunday night, you better not be going nowhere Sunday night. But Monday night, a week from tomorrow night's uh, camp meeting at follow if anybody wants to go, starts at 7 o'clock. Brother John preaches Tuesday night uh, or Monday night. They have a Monday morning service with Melvin Sanchez. Sunday uh, Monday night uh, is uh, John Parrish. Uh, Tuesday morning, Todd Hoskins. Tuesday night, Tommy Bates. So anybody that wants to go, you, it'll, it's an awesome lineup. Amen. Be blessed. I love y'all so much. Father, we come to you this evening. We love you. We thank you for the presence, the power, and the anointing of God that we feel in this place. No doubt, no doubt, God, you've been here among us, and we love you for it. We thank you in Jesus' name. And everybody said.